you've come to the right place. If you're looking to create, launch, and scale a high value online training program. I'm your guide, Chris Badgett. I'm the co-founder of Lifter LMS, the most powerful learning management system for WordPress. Stay to the end. I've got something special for you. Enjoy the show. Hello and welcome back to another episode of LMS Cast. My name is Chris Badgett and I'm joined by a special guest. His name is Les Watson. He's from uh, Get More Time. That is at getmoretime.com.au. Welcome to the show, Les. Great to be here, Chris. Thanks. I'm really excited to get into it with you today because I am surrounded by overwhelmed people uh, who the number one reason they can't do X or finish Y or start Z or make time for this other important thing is they don't have time. There's no more time. They're maxed out. Let's help the people today. On, on, your, on your website at getmoretime.com.au, uh, there's an opportunity to get an hour back. Like an hour is awesome. It's, it's not the, uh, you're not promising the world. Like it's not a four hour work week. But like an hour per day can be very meaningful to people. How do we do that? That's a great question. You've started. You've opened up Pandora's box now. <laughs> we, we could be here for hours. The the thing about uh, time is that it doesn't go away. And if you're breathing, you need time management. And it's like, oh, that's a blanket statement, Les. So what? It's like, well, if you're in control of your time, you can make stuff happen. Or I was going to swear there, but it's a family show, Chris. So let's not yeah. let's not swear. <laughs> the the thing about time is getting in control of it. You can't make any more, but by giving you back an hour a day, it's like where did I get that hour from, and what can I do with it? So a lot of the people that you were talking about that are listening and watching, the opportunity is to go if you get back the hour, and we'll talk about that in a moment. What are you going to do with it? There's no use getting an hour and then sitting there twiddling your thumbs or going back onto social media. It doesn't work that way. It's like, what's in your heart? What's your desire? What's the big goal? What's the big dream? Like, let's go, folks. What do you want to create? It's not a matter of sitting back going, oh, yeah, I can watch another uh, episode of my soap or an episode of the latest. It's like, no, what's on your heart? Let's, let's create something big. Let's go and help some people. And that's why when you and I met Chris, it's like, Chris goes, you might have something for the for the folks here. The thing about getting back an hour a day, that's many and varied. And at the stick around to the end of the episode, because I've, I've got a, um, a downloadable that I want to give you. And it's 25 time tips. And there's all of my top tips I've put in there. So let's just cover off a couple of them that may be able to help a few people. And the Let's first one is how, how's your email, Chris? My email's pretty good. I have a pretty good relationship with it though. I've been working on it for 12 years. So I have awesome. a team and I have an assistant and uh, I time box my email literally right after we record this call. Um, it will be 5 PM my time. So I only do email between 5 p.m. and 6 p.m. And at 6 p.m., if I'm not in for dinner, my wife's going to be mad at me. So uh, I have one hour and it's at the end of my day after I've done all my deep work kind of projects and, and key meetings and everything. So I never start my day with email. Awesome. I love that. I love it. There are some people that need to start theirs. And I'm going to give a tip straight off the bat. Put in your email signature. I only check my email once a day. I only check my email twice a day. I only check my email three times a day. I only check my email at the top of the hour. So what, Chris, what you're saying is you're not run by your email. And so many people are run by the email. Oh, bing, ching, oh, oh, a notification. Oh, I've got to check it. And you get distracted away from the main thing into, oh, it's another sale on it. it whatever. So, so don't be distracted with the, the notifications. Next tip, take your notifications off. What? What is this crazy Australian talking about? Yes. Take your, your notifications off. Take the ding off. Take the pop-up off. 
so that you don't notice when an email comes in. Yeah, but what if someone needs something urgently? They can ring you. And I put that on my email signature as well. I only check it at the top of the hour. And if it's really urgent, give me a call. And in, a, in an office situation, or come around to my desk and tap me on the shoulder. Because email isn't the be on and end all. Now, are there situations where it is the be on and end all? Yes, there are hot desks, there are receptionists, there are help desks. Those sorts of things really dictate that you be at the beck and call of people. But the majority of us aren't. The majority of us have the opportunity to go, no, check this out, Chris, close your email client down. <gasps> Shock, horror. You can do that? Yes, you can. So that, that's number one. So a couple around your inbox. And then as an email comes in, one of four things. I, I separate this into leadership and discipline. We'll talk about that in a minute. One of four things. Can you do the email within two minutes? If so, do it, get it out of the road and you're done with that email. Next one is, is it worthy of actually having a look? If not, dump it. So do, then dump. And if it's something you need to archive off, and again, dump it into a folder called, I need to keep it, but I don't need to see it anymore. Do dump. Next one is delegate. If it's not yours and you've got team members that you can delegate to, then delegate the email nicely. Don't just Slippery Sam and Teflon Tim and get rid of it to them. So nothing sticks with Chris. It just goes straight through him to me. I hate that. No, be nice. Give them what the task is, when you need it by, and and to what level Like is 80% okay, 100%, those sort of things. So do, dump, delegate, and the fourth one is decide when. If you can't do it within the two minutes, then decide when you're going to do it and make yourself an appointment so that you're able to do it at a certain... I can't do this one right now. I'm going to do it at quarter to five just prior to, you know, checking the email, says Chris. <laughs> And then from there, I will do that task and take me 15 minutes. So I decide when and I diarize it. So those four things do dump, delegate and decide when. It leads to a thing called inbox zero. Have a look at it, um, Google it or uh, whatever you do in, in your search function and have a look for inbox zero. Two guys, Merlin Mann and David Allen, they um, really went deep on Inbox Zero and it works for a lot of people. It may not work for you. It may not work for you and that's okay. Some people do Inbox Zero by the end of the week. Others do it by the end of the day, but it really works for a lot of people. They, they feel really clean. I had a guy, Chris, I had a guy who, when I said, what's wrong? He said, email, I found he had 6,000 emails in his inbox. And that's not the worst. I've had a guy with over 100,000, but that's another story. 6,000, I said, aha, found your problem. I went, how many are current? And he goes, mm, about 20. I said, great, leave the 20 and take the 5,980 and put them in a, a, another folder. Call it demilitarized zone or 2022 or whatever you'd like to call it, but get rid of it out of your eyesight. And then from there, you're left with 20 emails. He said, oh, I can do 20 emails. And by the end of the day, he was free and clear of his email because it was causing him so much angst. And he went home running and skipping and jumping and going, this is the best thing ever. Had a great night, came back the next morning, seven emails in his inbox, and he was a new man, inbox zero. So there's a couple of tips around email, Chris. I love that. David Allen, Getting Things Done. I, I read that book in the, earlier in my entrepreneur journey and it, cha it literally changed my life. Like, I don't think I could have done, I couldn't have gotten done what I've gotten done by not learning some of the skills in that book. It's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a really good, good one. Let me let me in you on a little secret. Mr. Yeah. David Allen trained me. Nice. <laughs> back, in the, back in the mid eighties. And yes, that was a long time ago, but that's beside the point. He, he's an amazing man. He's an amazing trainer. And you said it changed your life. Sitting in the room with him for three days, it changed my life. I did a couple of other seminars with him, six-day seminars. It really was life-changing. So if you haven't got the book, now, speaking of books, we've, we've got a couple of books. You can get his book, but the other really good book is Get Back an Hour and Every Day by Les Watson. That's, that's a highly recommended book, and that's available on the website as well. But his, a lot of my um, basics come from him. 
like I wouldn't be where I am today if I if I didn't sit underneath David Allen. So what have you built on top of his? How have you gone further and 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 really carved out this niche of getting an hour back a day? Like what other frame? What what other useful frameworks can people think about time differently or or go through tasks or projects or planning differently? I'm not necessarily a builder. Um, my wife, my wife's a creator. Um, she's written a, an award-winning book and uh, she, she's really good at that. And, and when I do a bit, she goes, look at you creating. And I go, yeah, yeah. I know it's an anomaly. I, I, I more take what other people and, and put them into um, certain order so that it works. For example, um, Eisenhower's matrix, the important and urgent matrix. And there are four quadrants where you've got on, on one axis, you've got important and the other axis is, is urgent. So if you put urgent and important or very urgent and very important, that's the, that's the one that you get done straight away. And the opposite of that is not important and not urgent. And they're the, they're the games that you play and the, the news that you read and the things that don't matter. So the, from one quadrant called get it done right away to the other quadrant called get rid of it. Don't even, don't even have it entertain you. And then you get another quadrant, which is urgent, but not important. And then they normally come from other people called, I need this, I need this, I need this. Now, if you can delegate that to somebody else, because it's not actually important for you, maybe urgent for them, not important for you. We need to, in this matrix, you need to spend time in the quadrant that is important and not urgent. So very important and not urgent. And that's where you do your planning. So for people, I would recommend, how is your schedule in your week around planning? Do you start your week with planning? Do you end your week with planning? Those sorts of times where the phrase working on your business, not in your business. And yeah, you'll get a lot of people that go, yeah, but I don't have a business. That doesn't matter. The business of doing life can be, what am I focused on? What am I planning? What am I, what am I taking time to carve out so that I know what's on the horizon? Because some people get stuck in the day-to-day -day and don't look forward. One of David Allen's greatest was the areas of focus or the horizons of focus where you've got the runway and then 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000. So you go, what's on the runway? The tasks you've got to do today, the tasks come out of projects, the projects come out of areas of responsibility, which comes out of three years, five years, and then vision and purpose. And, and again, we could go into vision and purpose and do a whole section on that because if you're not living on purpose, it's really hard to get out of bed. Whereas... I, 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 I don't know, Chris, I'm not going to put you on the spot here around what's your purpose. But when I discovered my purpose about 10 years ago, I just went, what? How is it that I've been 50 years on the planet and I didn't know my purpose? I don't understand it? this. What's your Mine, purpose? Yeah. to bring life, to bring life. So if I'm out at a networking event, it's to bring life. If I'm doing coaching, it's to bring life. If I'm doing a get back an hour and every day seminar, it's to bring life. If I'm on a podcast and streaming live to Facebook, it's to bring life. That's awesome. Mine, by the way, is to lift up others through education. That's that's my life and my company mission. Awesome. Um, I love it. Let's go back down onto, I, I don't know if it's the runway or not, but um, you mentioned starting the day with purpose or, but in that, that, uh, jog my mind here. What are some time management or productivity tips either around the morning routine or the, the end of work or end of evening shutdown routine? Like how do those fit in time management? For me, I, I morning routine is super important. I have a really long one. I've been developing it for years, but how do, how do those affect your productivity? I have, uh, again, there are things that I own as mine and others that I don't. One of David Allen's is the cycle of productivity, where you have an idea and then you start it, start it and then continue it, continue it, then finish it, finish, then acknowledge. If you do that cycle, it allows you to then start again. If you don't 
finish the cycle, it becomes an incompletion. And, and Chris is nodding because he knows what I'm talking about. And those incompletions sit in your brain and take up space. And every now and then when you want to actually <laughs> focus on one thing, you've got these 40 other things tapping on the shoulder going, yes, but what about me? Hey, but what about what? Hey, 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 what about what? what uh, are you sure? Are you really sure? Are you totally sure? And you get distracted back to, oh, maybe I better check. And, and that's the incompletion. So one of the things that David suggests is get it out of your head down onto paper. And I have a trigger list. If anyone wants to hit me up, I'm happy to, to give them a, a website that I can talk them through that trigger list. Again, it's just a um, straight website that you can go to. And it has me talking you through the words that will trigger some of those incompletions. But once you get it out of your head, down onto paper, you can then do something with it. So at the end of the day, are you completing stuff? Are you then transferring that to another day if you haven't been completed so you can get it done? So it's good to finish the day with, okay, where am I at? What do I need to acknowledge? A lot of people get through the day and go home, get up the next day and get on the, the treadmill and never actually not acknowledge the stuff that they're, they're doing. It's just so unfortunate. I, I, autopilot. I'm, it's autopilot. Uh, yeah, right. and, it, and it doesn't need to be that way. It can be as simple as get to the end of the day and go, well done, nicely played. You did that, that, and that. That's awesome. And that's all for today. What are you doing tomorrow? And again, I look at it from the weekly review, and you can do it on a daily review. The weekly review for me is what did you do well, what didn't you do well, and what can you do differently? And if you bring that onto a daily basis, you can actually say to yourself, what did we do well today? Da, 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 da. what didn't we do well oh, and what can we do differently tomorrow to create a better result and that's simple you can do that yourself you can do it with your team do it with a partner and then you extrapolate that out to the end of the week where you're looking at it called what did we do this year this week what we did we accomplish what meetings did we we have what came out of those meetings and then from there, if you wrap that up, you then go, okay, what's coming up in the next week or the next fortnight or the next month? So you're starting to look forward rather than it coming around and biting you in the bottom saying, I've got, I've got a breakfast tomorrow and I haven't ordered it. That sort of thing. That's awesome. I love that. Um, one of the challenges here, I, I'm going to just describe it quickly, is as an education entrepreneur, a course creator, a coach, you often have to wear many hats. I have this simple framework I teach called the five hats, which is that you have to be an expert. You have to have an expertise in something or go get that. Um, you have to be a technologist. You have to be an instructional designer or teacher. You have to be a community builder. And then the final and fifth one is you have to be an entrepreneur, you know, do marketing, sales, build a company and all that. It's a lot of hats to wear. So for somebody that is wearing all the hats where it feels like, hey, I don't just have like one job. I actually have like five jobs and I'm only one person. How do how does somebody like deal with that immense responsibility? You keep throwing me back to David. And again, if that book changed your life, the seminar changed my life. This, uh, those that are on the Facebook can see it, but I'm holding up my planner and it's got a zip. It's an A5 planner. And I got a planner like this back in 1985 when I was with David. And again, changed my life because I was able to segment my life into seven plus or minus two areas. And I was able to do that really well. So I go, okay. What are those seven plus or minus two areas? Now, there's a couple that are relevant for all of us. One is money, one so finance, personal, and fitness. So those should be in every system. And your point of putting it into five hats, which is the expert, the technologist, the teacher, instructional designer, the community builder, and the entrepreneur, you can put those in tabs in a planner. They can be in tabs. They can have their own tab and go, okay, so I'm done being a teacher for now. What are the other areas? 
And I do a wheel of life. And again, the wheel of life came out of one of those training from way back when. And my wheel of life, I get to do on a regular basis to go, what level of satisfaction I am, am I in those areas in my life? So you can look at it and say to yourself, if you're wearing those five hats, what's my level of satisfaction about being an expert? Am I happy with it? Am I satisfied with it? And do I want to do anything with it? Because if I'm a five and I'm satisfied with the five, sorry, if I'm a five and I want to be an eight, then I probably set some goals and some tasks to do something about it. Again, you can go through the whole lot. So it really is a segmentation, taking your life and taking it into, well, where, what are those areas for you? Now, if I open mine, the way, the way they look at the moment, I've got work, marketing, writing, because I'm writing a second book. I've got wellness, fitness, finance, personal. I've got a, uh, a group I meet with on a monthly basis, BBG. I mentor people. I've got a, a, an MC role for localized, and I've got a connect group. So there's a lot there, but they are in separate pieces. So if I need something, I'll dump it in there. And when I need it back again, I just go to that tab. I don't need to be searching on my desk, like, where do I put that piece of paper? It's got to be, Chris, it's got to be around here somewhere. Just one moment. It's on a, it's on a slip of paper. No, it's on an envelope. No, it's on the back of an, a, a, a napkin. No, no, it's in my planner. And because it's in my planner, it's in one of those areas. And I could just go straight to it. I love that. And what are some tips you have around the challenge with segmentation? One of them is turning the corner and, and like, closing that tab and opening that other tab. I think the classic example you hear is uh, very broadly, you know, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm uh, working all day, feeling guilty. I'm not spending time with my family. And then I'm spending time with my family thinking about feeling guilty about not working. Like how do we make, when we like change to a different segment, how do we do that with, without guilt or, and also just let go and give that thing full focus without carrying the other one kind of in the background of our mind? Yeah, I love these questions. They are awesome because there's two things. The first thing, uh, second thing is Pomodoro, and we'll get to that in a tick. The first thing is communication. So communication to the people in your life. So if you're guilty around work and home, you need to have a conversation about that. Too many people hold onto the guilt, don't talk to the other person, and they hold onto the guilt thinking they need to hold onto the guilt. And the other person's free and clear. It's like, hello, what is that serving you? No, it's not. So get over it or communicate it. It's called, oh, I was off, or no, you need to do something different. You need to be home at, at six every night because I need you. So that communication is really important. And you can do that with a significant other, but you can also do it with a business partner and you can also do it with your boss. And, and work-life balance, if there is such a thing, has shifted so much nowadays that you need to have that conversation and go, I feel guilty if I don't, and have your boss respond. Because if they're pressing you to do something that you don't want to do that's not working for your mental health you need to have a conversation about it because if you're not having a conversation about it you you're actually heading towards a mac truck and no one wants that for anybody and i did one recently on what are the um the signs of burnout and that's another topic but so many people are on that precipice of burnout and they don't even know and I really encourage people to, particularly for blokes, particularly for men, for the male species that need to get over this thing of, I, I got to keep it all bottled up. We need to start talking about it more and more and more. And that's why having a mate is such a, the old Aussie mateship and the uh, American mateship and my mate and having having a beverage, whatever your beverage is, for Australians, it's let, let's have a beer, but you can have a coffee, you can have a water, you can go for a walk and talk about it. And it's not a matter of let's go for a walk, I want to open up and you open up immediately. Maybe it's in the last five minutes, you actually get to the area you want to talk about. 
but give yourself the opportunity to talk about those things that don't work for you. So that's that one, conversation. And the other one is how do you turn the corner? Thank you, Chris. How do you turn the corner? How do you turn the corner from this task to the next task? And Pomodoro is one of those ways that you can do that. The Pomodoro technique is 25 minutes on and five minutes off. And the 25 minutes, so the, the word Pomodoro comes from the Italian Pomodoro, which is Italian for tomato. So the little, little timer, uh, there it is. I've got one right here. Look, for those that are on YouTube, you can see me holding up a little timer that looks like a tomato. And it's set for 25 minutes and it ticks. And what you have the opportunity to do is look at that task, work on that task, go for that task for 25 minutes. And when the timer goes off, you go, I'm done. And you walk away, have a break, go to the bathroom, do whatever you need to do, clear your head, and then come back and do the next task. If you are trying to segment it from one division to the next division to the next division, you could start with one division, do your Pomodoro, and then go, okay, that's that division. I'm going to move to another one. I'm going, now going to go to Community Builder and do that from there. So that's one way of doing it. Segment it, have a timer, and enable it to be the tap on the shoulder called stop, go and do something else. I love that. You mentioned it, and I can't help but ask, what is, because I know it affects a lot of people, especially entrepreneurs and course creators and uh, freelancers. Um, what What is the, the kind of counterintuitive or sign of burnout that you should look for in yourself or in your friends or whatever? Like when it kind of sneaks up on you, right? What's the, oh, yeah. what's the, when should we start to maybe have some concern? It's a big topic and it's probably for another day, but if, if you exploding at nothing, if you, if you've got no passion, if you, if even uh, taking the small things in life that don't, don't mean anything anymore, you're biting people's heads off those sorts of things that can sneak up and you need to number one, check yourself, but also have other people check you. Um, can I give you some feedback? Uh, and yeah. most people run a mile. No, or no, not right now. And they never get back to it. So ha have people to speak into your life. I have a model. Uh, it's the easy model, ES and I, and, and those that can, um, that are watching on the, on, on the the uh, the video can actually see that I have a model with me, but it's an ES and I. So the three-legged model of external action, internal focus and support. And it's actually huge that a lot of people don't let people support them. No, 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 Chris, I'll do it myself. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. No, I'm fine. Not all good. All good. And everyone around them can see that they're drowning, but them. And what, what happens is the ego gets in the road and stops them from being supportable. So that's number one, are you supportable? Number two is, do you ever ask for support? Do you ever go out of your road and go, um, um, excuse me, Chris, I was wondering if you could give me a hand. Now, if Chris is busy, he could go, no, what I then don't do is crawl up in the corner and go, nobody loves me, everybody hates me, I think I'll go and eat worms. See, Les, it didn't work. I went and asked Chris, and it doesn't work. Well, that was only one. Go and ask again and again and again and again, because there'll be somebody in your life that will give you a hand. There will be somebody in your life that will support you. There'll be somebody in, the life, in your life that will help you. But you need sometimes to get off your own case and ask. So that, that model... And there's other legs to it, but the, one of those legs is support. And a lot of people need to reach out. They need to use the support that's available and uh, get off their ego. That's awesome. You mentioned your purpose was to bring life. Am I right? Yep. How does, and I love what you said too. I'm, I, you know, more recently figured out that kind of cadence of, you know, the 10 year vision, the five year, the three year, the one year, the quarters, the months, the weeks, the day and, and how it all like rolls up. But if, if you don't really have that kind of mission, vision values thing at the top and the purpose stuff, 
you, it, it's a lot harder. How did you find your purpose of bringing life? Yeah, I, I, I was very fortunate. I was in, um, working with an organization and I was providing seminars and bringing other experts in. And one of them was looking at planning and, and marketing and business planning. And they, they came up with this one page plan. And in the one page plan, they had two hours and I'm in, I was um, assembling the people and enrolling the people, but I was sitting in the course as well. And they had a machine in front of me. And he said, and one of the, the things here is your purpose and you need to work out your purpose. And it was a two hour session. And I'm going, oh, I'm not going to be able to work out my purpose in two hours. I mean, what? And, and no, that's not going to happen. So I grabbed my, my, my sheet and I tucked it away and came home and I said to my wife, Mary, her name is, I said, Mary, we need to go to a coffee shop on Saturday morning and I need you to walk me through this, this line of questioning around, your per around my purpose. And the line of questioning is, why do you do what you do? And the normal answer for most people is money. Okay, and why is money important? Oh, because it enables this, this, and this. Yes, good answer. And why is that important? And you just keep asking the why question until you get to a bottom line. And Chris, you've got your bottom line. You can't go any deeper than that bottom line or in, in the, the, the ascendancy, you can't get any higher than that. So there's nothing above that. There's nothing beyond that. So for me, to bring life was the bottom line for me. It's, it's like, and when, when I hit it, I just the, the lights went off and I've gone, what? That is, that is amazing. And, it, and my wife said, it's so true for you. No matter where you go, you bring life. And uh, I, I've just prior to this, I did a, um, a Facebook Live into my group and I get on and I go, woohoo, welcome to... Watson Wednesday, or welcome to Marvelous Monday, or welcome to Fantastic Friday. Woohoo, let's go. And people love that because they don't get it. They don't get enough people around them to go, life is great, life is grand, life is fantastic. And I've got problems, I've got challenges. I've got a friend of mine who's got cancer and she's gone, she's been in remission for three years and it's just come back. And I'm going, stick around, babe. You've got more life. You've got more stuff to, to handle. You really need to surround yourself with people that lift you up and not focus on what's not working. But we're going to do everything we can to lift you up and have you live the best life possible. And she went, thanks for that. That's awesome. That's awesome. Any tips on that? the next layer down, the 10-year, like, like, I talk to some people and they're like, I don't think that way. I can't plan that far in advance. So like you kind of have the, the, the big kind of themed plan, but then to actually get some clarity, like if you're going to visualize where you want to be in 10 years or your business or whatever, how do we do that? That's great. If you've got a purpose, then you do ask yourself that question. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? What's the vision that you have for yourself of your business in 10 years? Or you could go to the end of your life and go, if people were standing around your gravesite, what would they be saying about you? What did you create? Like what contribution did you make to the world? And it doesn't necessarily mean to the world world, but in your world, what, what's the contribution? What, what impact did you make? And we can all make a contribution, even if it's to lost dogs. Even if it's to, to animals, we can all make a contribution. And yet the people listening, we have the opportunity to make impact in our world. So if you were to ask yourself the question, where do I see myself in 10 years or in 20 years? What's that impact? And if you, if you flesh that out, I want to have this company or this amount of money or this amount of friends or have this sort of impact in the world, then if you have that, you can paint that picture and go, if that's that in 20 years time, then what do I need to do that brings that down in 10 years time? To get to that 20 year goal, what do I need to do in 10 years? 
from 10 years to five years, five years to one year, one year to this quarter, this quarter, this month, this month to this week, this week to today, what can I do today that then ascends up to me living my purpose and creating that vision? I love that. I love that. Uh, you've reached the free consulting part of the call or the, the podcast. <laughs> um, so one challenge, I'm, I, it sounds like I read a lot of the same books as you and follow some of the same people. Like, I love this stuff, you know, like write your eulogy. Uh, and, you know, my wife thinks I'm crazy. I want to get my tombstone made and keep it outside of my, in the yard to, to remind me of like, hey, time short, make it count. <laughs> I love it. But, but um, what I like productivity is a, is a lifelong journey. It's like a, you never arrive. Like you can always um, get better or even just not necessarily get more time, but get more relaxed through the process. There's all, it's like a, it's an art that never finishes. I feel like I, I'm somewhat of an advanced productivity nerd but I feel like I've hit a wall. Like, I don't know how to sharpen it more. Is it like, where do I look to, not that I have to always be improving or whatever, but if I'm fully, fully engaged, uh, like, or, or at least I feel like there's not further to go. Like, how do we break through the next barrier of productivity when we feel like we've maxed out? Cause you know, I look at, there's famous entrepreneurs out there. Well, that person's a hundred times more productive than me. Not that it's a race, but where can we, where can we look to find gains when we've already been on the journey for a while? Very good. And, and again, uh, you've got coaching. I've got coaching. I have a coach and I am a coach. So number one, get a coach. So, so Chris and I'll get off the call and I'll go. So when we do the next call, so I can coach you, Chris, on taking you to the next level. And, and, and the, the opportunity for everyone is to get a coach. And whether that's a coach or a mentor or someone outside that you can take, if, if you are so honed, and I'm not saying you, Chris, but if we are so honed, then sometimes we have blind spots. We can't see the wood for the trees. We can't get out of our own road. And therefore, we need somebody else. So talk somebody else through your process of, what you're trying to create, what is your long-term vision? What is your purpose in life? What's your long-term vision? And talk them through the 20-year plan, the 10-year plan, the five-year plan, and the one-year plan. Talk, talk it through, get it out of your mouth, out of your head, out of your mouth, out to somebody and write notes as you go, because no doubt you'll go, oh, I forgot that. Oh, I forgot that I was passionate about that. Oh, I, oh I'm so, so thankful you to listen to me. I'm back on track. And, and you're off. And the, the coach goes, but I didn't say anything. And that's because it's not about necessarily somebody else, but you need to get it out of your mouth and they can feed it back to you to go, you know, you're on track and you know, you, you're good at what you do. And if you just move that little bit, oh, thanks for that. And you're off and running. So don't think you have to do it yourself. Get someone alongside you, get a coach, get a mentor. Get a friend that can walk you along the process. Like you said earlier, sometimes people have a hard time asking for help. So that's that's uh, that's really sound wisdom you're giving there. You've got a gift for everybody. It's at getmoretime.com.au forward slash time tips. Tell us again what they can get if they go visit that link, which is also in the show notes for the podcast and under the YouTube video. Awesome. It's 25 time tips. It's the culmination of everything I've got. It's like it's it's in, in a PDF and it, it's it's something you can download and run with. You can walk yourself through the 25. Am I doing this? Am I doing this? Am I doing this? Like the first one is, do you have a trusted system? Going back to our good friend, David Allen, do you have a planner? Do you have somewhere that you get it out of your head down onto paper? Um, and I take you through 25 of those that really will give you the opportunity to increase your productivity and maybe get back that hour a day. So from there, there are other things that we can do, but get that one first of all, and let's start a conversation. Um, you, can, you can get in touch with me for that free download 
of the um, what the, the 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 words what what the, what's the word that I'm looking for, Chris? Help me out here. The twenty five time tips. No, twenty five time tips, and there's another one which is the it just escaped me. It's the trigger words. So the trigger words, and again, there's more for that. But start with the twenty five. The twenty five will set you up. The 25 is a do-it-yourself opportunity that you can download and run. But if you want more than just the 25 and you want someone to walk along with you, I'm happy to have that conversation. There's uh, an opportunity on the website, getmoretime.com.au, that we can have that conversation. You just tick the box and uh, let's, have, let's have a chat. Let's talk from the other side of the world, Chris. That's awesome. That's it, getmoretime.com dot au forward slash time tips for the resource one final question for you the whether there's a a expert or coach type person or somebody who's building a learning platform for a client um they often run into their in their work uh with their customer or client or potentially even with somebody they love in their personal life somebody that they care about that says they don't have more time that is not um, necessarily as much of a productivity nerd like you or I, or necessarily as personal development focused, but yet our heart as a coach or as a partner or a friend to someone we love, we want to help that person who's hitting, they, they have hit the wall of time. Can we help them? Can we save people that are, um, they say they don't have any more time to do whatever it is, focus on their health or start that business they've been talking about for forever or take up that hobby that they said that would make them be less stressed, but they don't have any time. Can we help somebody who is blocked? Individually, we, we personally as human beings can only offer. We can offer a person they need to want to get out of the hole because some people really enjoy being in the hole and they took a lot of drama of never have any time, Chris, never have any time. And their life is, is surrounded by people who go, oh, didums, what can I do? But it's always, I don't have any time and they get a, a lot of payoff out of that. The question would be, are you happy there and would you like to move? Would you like to get more time back in your day? And if they say yes, then you can start that journey. And make an First offer. You can make an offer and give them my 25 tips or give them the website and they can they can download it. But but make an offer, actually extend the hand because some people uh, go, you extend the hand and they don't even take it. So no matter what you do, they don't want to get out of the hole. Whereas a lot of people that I work with over time, they go, I had no idea that I could do things differently. I had no idea I could have systems that would help. So that when we have knowledge and systems and tools and techniques that other people don't know about, then that's where you and I, Chris, come in, where we are educators, we're givers. It's like, how can I help? How can I help? Well, I'm stuck in this area. Well, I have some suggestions. Would you like to hear them? Oh, yes, please. But the individual needs to take it and run with it. That's awesome. That's Les Watson. He's from getmoretime.com.au. Anywhere else people can connect with you or uh, final words? Everywhere. I'm on <laughs> Facebook. I'm on uh, Instagram as Time Lord Les. Some would say Time Lordles, but it's not. It's Time Lord Les. And <laughs> uh, creating success coaching. Um, happy to, to have a conversation with anybody. Please reach out. Um, it is one of those things that so many people don't take the action. And my invitation is take the action. Hear this, immediately download the 25 tips and get an email to me so that we can have a conversation. Happy to chat. Thanks, Les. Appreciate you coming on the show and keep up the amazing work. Thanks, Chris. And that's a wrap for this episode of LMS Cast. Did you enjoy that episode? Tell your friends and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. And I've got a gift for you over at lifterlms.com forward slash gift. Go to lifterlms.com forward slash gift. Keep learning, keep taking action, and I'll see you in the next episode.